In this module, we're going to talk about managing with Agile. Management is a hard job. You have, in my experience, a very small slice of people who are just gifted managers. For whatever reason, they are just simply fantastic. I am certainly not among them. And then you have a relatively sizable slice over here of people who love to be managers. Now, many, but not all of these people are kind of like bad drivers. I always find that bad drivers, they love to drive. It's not stressful for them because they're not paying attention to what they're doing and trying to make sure that they're doing a good job. And a lot of the time, it's kind of the same thing with these people who just love to be managers. And then you have a big slice here of people who don't particularly like being managers and they recognize how hard it is and they're always trying to do a better job. And I think that's where uh, most of us fit and certainly the most most of the most conscientious managers fit in that slice. So if you're in that boat and you think management is hard and you don't understand why you haven't found the Rosetta Stone or the Silver Bullet yet, don't feel bad. It's just a really tough job. Particularly managing with Agile requires a lot of refinement and a lot of things that are kind of hard to do. A lot of letting go, letting others learn for themselves, and then pulling back and just being the one to create a good working environment for them. Sounds easy when you read it in a book. It's really hard to do in practice. It's important to think about what's going on beyond the obvious. I have all these plants at home, and periodically they'll get pests like mealybugs. And you know, I'll ask one of the experts that I consult with, what should I do about these mealybugs? And they'll tell me, oh, well, you know, you can do this or do that to get rid of them, and I, I absolutely do those things. But the thing that they always emphasize to me is that most of the time, mealybugs don't get on healthy plants. And managing with Agile is kind of the same way. Now, if you see things not going the way that they're supposed to go in the slides here that you've seen or that the processes are supposed to work, it may not mean that you're doing things wrong from a technical standpoint. You may have everything set up right, but maybe down here somewhere, your team's not feeling good about their work for some reason. And sometimes the answer is to take them out to lunch or talk to them about the work and just generally kind of back up and see how they're feeling about things because there is, as we discussed at the very beginning here, there's kind of a specific technique-oriented way of managing with Agile, and then there's also the interpersonal part of it. Particularly in an engineering organization, we pride ourselves on being objective, but the reality is it's just not true. We're all wired over the millennia to be enormously emotionally sensitive, and very few individuals aren't that way under the surface. So as you think about managing with Agile, think about that material as well. We're not, I don't really have a lot of material for you on being a great manager, unfortunately, but it is important to stay aware of those things. And there's a certain point where the technical parts of what we're going to discuss aren't the place to focus. It's the, the interpersonal parts of it. Let's talk about the jobs of managing here. So I've divided this into two parts. One is team management. So how are things going with your Agile team? And how are you creating an Agile-friendly environment where you all are progressively driving towards better and better Agile outcomes, you're marrying principles and practices, and things continue to get better and better? And then there's the interface to general management. So all the things that you and your team have to do to interface with the rest of the company that may or may not be on an Agile program, and all the things that you have to do to interface with, say, large customers or customers in general that, that obviously aren't on your development program. Um, so success here looks like we are doing the practices of Agile, and after some practice, because it will not happen right away, the practices don't require too much pushing, and that the principles are visible in the outcomes that we're achieving. Now, you'll hear this question a lot. You know, we think that the principles are more important than the practices, and, you know, when you hear this, we hear this from somebody like Spotify who's had a lot of experience. It, it means something relatively specific to them in their context. But if you're just starting out with Agile and you're going through the, the growing pains, the birthing pains of starting this, th there's few discussions that are gonna be less productive than which is more important, principles or practices. It is something where the practices are where you start and they are the things that you do and you wanna make sure that when you ask, well, why are we doing this and how will we know it, it, if it's successful, that's a good place to talk about the principles. But you know, it's, it's not like, um, you know, 
chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream and you're going to pick one and take it home with you, they both have their place and their time. And I, I would say that the relationship between these two things is that the practices are making sense. And when you look at outcomes and when you judge the practices on whether they're working for you, you're referring to the principles at that point. You should be evolving collaboratively and, and experimenting. This is kind of echoes one of the Kanban principles. And what this means is that everyone's involved in improving your practice of Agile. And if that's not the case, you probably have a bunch of team members that, that aren't very bought in and you kind of need to unpack that to get the full benefit of these practices of self-organizing and working collaboratively. And Stakeholders, meaning external stakeholders, they're satisfied. And so you have relatively few unplanned surprises from your internal analogs inside the company, other people that you work with in finance, just outside your group and so forth on, on product. So those are the, a few of the, the high points and kind of guiding ideas about managing with Agile and a few of the success criteria that I would recommend using as a focal point for figuring out how you're doing and where you want to spend time. And in the videos that follow, we'll talk about how to use Agile to manage your team better.